सेव किया था ना मैं सिर्फ इसलिए गया था क्योंकि उसने मुझे कॉल किया दैट्स इट बट लिसन तो सेव इट फॉर समवन एल्स जिंदगी में सेव करना जरूरी है मगर जब बात पैसों की हो सिर्फ सेविंग से काम नहीं चलेगा इक्विटी म्यूचुअल फंड्स में इन्वेस्ट कीजिए और अपने सेविंग्स को आगे बढ़ने का मौका दीजिए म्यूचुअल फंड इन्वेस्टमेंट्स आर सब्जेक्ट टू मार्केट रिस्क रीड ऑल स्कीम रिलेटेड डॉक्यूमेंट्स केयरफुली मोदी गवर्नमेंट हैज बिन ट्राइंग टू रिफॉर्म सम फंडामेंटल इंस्टीट्यूशन इन आर एंटायर डिफेंस स्ट्रक्चर द मिलिट्री डिफेंस स्ट्रक्चर एंड ऑल्सो ट्राइंग टू बिल्ड a genuine indian military industrial complex that is something of which we've seen evidence particularly now these are breakthrough events when some orders have been placed with private companies the c295 transport aircraft between the tatas and airbus is a very good example of of that but that's only one there is much else happening there is artillery guns there are some new new technologies drones many other areas where the private sector is being involved and that's happening that's happening by by integrating indian armed forces indian defense research private manufacturers and public sector manufacturers all of them and making them competitors because competition brings out the best competition also gets you the best costs now the one important reform that modi government had carried out earlier and that we spoke about in a separate episode of kartak clutter that was the that was the reform of the ordnance factories board so f- factories in india that were manuf- that were manufacturing for the defense defense forces they were factories under under the ministry they were like they were like departments of the government they were corporatized they were not privatized they were collapsed into seven units or seven divisions otherwise there was a proliferation right this factory that that factory this factory that factory they were then consolidated into seven division depending on their functions and what they were producing and they were corporatized so each one has a balance sheet now a pnl account a profit and loss account and each one at least theoretically now has to compete for orders make bids for orders from the armed forces in competition with the private sector a work in progress nothing is perfect so soon but a work in progress nevertheless in the same direction in the same direction modi government has now started a process of reforming defense research and development organization drdo drdo is among the most important departments of government of india it's also among the most underperforming in many ways it's also among the most maligned and why do i say underperforming and then the most maligned because if you are underperforming then if you get criticized for that that is not how are you being maligned so the fact is they are underperforming and yet i am saying most maligned because they are set up in a system where they can't where they can't even deliver too much because they are also like a humongous department of the government with more than 50 different labs each one doing some distinctive thing but with an unclear sense of direction unclear sense of direction in terms of what should drdo be doing should they be making trying to make everything should be should they be trying to replicate everything are there are there import substitution organization which means if a certain missile becomes available in the world or a certain kind of aircraft is being used in the world or drones of a certain kind are being used does drdo then start developing the same system which means you start about 15 years behind the rest of the world because that system is already out in the marketplace and the armed forces can buy it off the shelf or or do you develop new things at home anticipating what you might need going ahead or and also focus in concentrated areas in areas of your of your strength so that is where you can you can make a difference or 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 work in areas where you need technologies that nobody will give you now a very good example of that is the integrated guided missile development program that started in the 80s early 80s and since then has delivered real missiles for india so agni prithvi right they've come out of this research the various versions and the various editions if i may use that word of agni and prithvi have all all come out of this research and the same integrated program 
also then gave us Akash, which is a surface-to-air missile, sort of medium range surface-to-air missile. Again, behind times, behind times because it took, it took too long developing and by the time it came in, it was part obsolete and also part cumbersome given the new technologies that are available. But also, also you had programs on anti-tank missiles, NAG group of missiles and many other missiles that the, that the Indian Armed Forces have been needing. Some of these are in operations. In fact, among the latest additions right now, the missile additions has come to the Indian Air Force. That is Astra, the beyond visual range missile that DRDO has developed in some foreign collaborations. There is no shame about that. That's now a standard issue on Sukhoi 30 aircraft. But it's also now been tested. The first test has been carried out on Tejas Mark 1. And chances are, or the prospects are, that this will again be standard issue or standard induction on Tejas Mark 1A. Tejas Mark 1A also will have an Indian radar. I prefer Indian to indigenous. I don't know for what reason, at, at what point in our history, we started preferring indigenous to Indian. I think let's stick to Indian. At least I will stick to Indian. So Tejas Mark 1A will have an Indian radar, the Uttam ESA radar. ESA, as we know, is active electronic scan array. That is the most modern kind of radar. And if you want to use modern missiles, particularly modern missiles with a long range, your aircraft has to be able to track the target much earlier. In modern warfare, remember, one who sees the other first wins. And one who sees the other first should also then have the wherewithal to reach that target. So that target is the missile, that radar, a high-powered radar is what enables you to use that long-range missile. So these are domestically developed systems, again, each one with some foreign collaboration which is a good thing. So a few things are happening, but not enough is happening. Not enough is happening. And that's the reason, and that's the reason Modi government has now looked at this review of the functioning of DRDO. Now, in recent past, there have been many, many demands to do so. The Kargil committee, that K. Subramanian, the father of our current foreign minister, he led that Kargil committee recommended a reorganization of DRDO. After that, there have been several par par parliamentary committees. I am sharing some links to some stories of reports of these parliamentary committees asking for, asking for modernization, changes, refocusing of DRDO. Also, some very critical reports from CAG and generally the armed forces have been critics of DRDO. So, a nine-member committee has now been set up which will look at DRDO in its entirety. Look, we'll look at its focus, its manpower, its areas of strength, where it might be frittering away its energies. For example, when COVID came, among the things that DRDO produced was, was a sanitizer. Is it DRDO's job to produce sanitizer? Sanitizer is pure spirit or al alcohol, right? DRDO also produced masks. It is not the job of DRDO to, pro to produce masks. Sometimes, when you, when you drive around your cities, you will see advertisements on, on buses with Rithik Roshan's picture. And this is about some herbal medication which is, which, which is supposed to give you some manly vigor or something. And it says DRDO tested. So I don't know how exactly it gets that stamp of DRDO tested. But the fact is that these labs need refocusing and they need much sharper focus. Because scientists are good. Indian Armed Forces have a lot of needs and not Everything Indian Armed Forces need has been has to be researched by labs in the US or in Russia or in Europe or in Israel, France. France is a part of Europe, but we keep France apart. And that's why DRDO needs a reorganization. So this committee that the government has now set up, it just happened this week. It's a nine-member committee. It's headed by K, Dr. K. Vijay Raghavan. Dr. K. Vijay Raghavan is a very highly reputed biotechnology scientist. He knows how to run a great lab because he's run some in his career. And with him, with him will be a very interesting group. So this group will, inc will include Lieutenant General Shubrato Saha. Lieutenant General Shubrato Saha is important because it was he as deputy chief. Deputy chief, there was a time when Modi government actually created a position of a deputy chief which was to look at indigenization and to promote interaction 
or interactivity between the armed forces and the private industry in particular. So Lieutenant General Subhato Saha, after, after he retired from the army, he started working with CII, Confederation of Indian Industry, the idea being to increase that interface between the armed forces and private sector. Then there is Vice Admiral Ghormade from the Navy, then Air Marshal B.R. Krishna. Air Marshal B.R. Krishna is the former Integrated Defence Staff Chief. Then S.P. Shukla of Mahindra Defence, what's he doing there? S.P. Shukla is also President of SIDM, which is Society of Indian Defence Manufacturers. So once again, strong private sector input. But really, if you want to understand how strong the private sector outreach is in this case, look at the next member. The next member is J.D. Patil, who's from LNT defense and he apparently from whatever i understand he has been more closely involved from the private sector with defense manufacturing in india at the cutting edge than almost anybody else further in addition there is sujan chinoy former diplomat and now director of manohar parikar institute of defense studies and analysis his new book has just come out look at the jacket of the book please check it out it's a it's a fine book professor manindra agrawal of iit kanpur who's again doing frontline research work in uavs or what might be called drones uh, there is professor s unnikrishnan nair of isro and of course defense ministry's financial advisor Rasika Chaube. So this group will now look at the functioning of the DRDO and give recommendations to the government leading to future reform. Now DRDO has always been subjected to a great deal of criticism. I have done so myself. In fact, it was almost, almost 20 years ago, almost two decades ago that I wrote a column, a national interest column, which was headlined Dr. Kal Kalam's Banana Republic. So what was, what was that headline about? The headline was about the fact that any time the armed forces want something and they could go to the government saying, we need this, DRDO says, humko ye banana hai, we'll make this, hum ye banayenge, we can make this, we will make this, right? But they end up making nothing. So because they end up making nothing, the armed forces don't get that equipment. They keep waiting forever unless a real emergency comes and then they make some small time off the shelf purchases that's a bit like a parent taking a kid to hamleys or some toy store and saying beta abhi itna paisa le lo take this much money buy a little bit buy this toy or buy maybe two miniature cars or two miniature airplanes etc so indian armed forces that were, were then just making emergency purchases of small in small volumes which first of all created disadvantages for the armed forces because it took too long for them to get modern equipment that they wanted. Second, it cost them too much money. It cost them too much money because one, when you go out to buy something in an emergency, the seller knows that you need it desperately. And when, if you are buying small quantities, the seller, you also don't have bargaining power with the seller. And that's why the armed forces used to complain. So I wrote that article, Dr. Kalam's Banana Republic. I will share a link with you of that article. And that's when, if I might tell you a little story by digressing, I got a call from Brijesh Mishra, who was then National Security Advisor. And he called me and he said, Bhai, aapne kya likh diya? Dr. Kalam to bahut udas ho gaye. He didn't say Dr. Kalam's got angry. He just said Dr. Kalam's upset or dismayed. So I said, I'm sorry, but this is what I thought the situation is. Uh, what can I do? So he said, can you come and have coffee with him? So I said, sure. So I think three or four days later, uh, I was ushered in to have coffee with Dr. Kalam. He then had an office in, in Vigyan Bhavan in Delhi. And I sat down with great trepidation, thinking that he will now pull me up and he will demonstrate with me. And Dr. Kalam, he was, we all respected him much too much to even argue with him. And he sat me down and he never talked about that article. We sat for about 45 minutes. He never talked about it, that article. He talked about the future, he talked about Vision 2020, etc., 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 and completely sort of disarmed me. So I came back. I came back, but you know, at some point in that conversation, he said, look, I know, I take your point that we can't make everything. But the fact is that the charter is set such that when, when the armed forces come up with something, we have to first say that we can do this. Now, what he didn't say clearly enough, but which was indicated 
was that the political class also wants you to say this. The political class also wants to be able to say, we will make this. So it is the political class that had made Indian defense or Indian defense research and production into a banana republic much more than DRDO, which is only a department of the government. So those were the complexities which have still not been settled. But despite those complexities, DRDO has produced a bunch of things. So if you look at the Army, Navy, Air Force now, Army has Arjun, main battle tank. Okay, it's not something that Army's frontline or bulk of Army's frontline tank divisions are using or tank regiments are using because the tank is too heavy. Some of the fault may lie with the army because it just kept on asking for more and more features to be added. But right now the tank is too heavy to be used in more, most areas. So the tank is only being used, it's been produced in very small numbers. It has not been abandoned, the project. The army is now talking of something which might come into service in 2030. That is future ready combat vehicle, FRCV. So army is also trying to leapfrog this. Uh, Arjun business. And for that to happen, DRDO has to have time and mind space available to be able to do that. Tejas. Now, LCA, LCA is something that started 40 years back, more than 40 years back. The tank program started in 1974, but really picked up about 10 years later. I saw the first prototypes of Arjun at Avadi, at CVRD, the lab, the DRDO lab, in 1985 and wrote about it in India today. There is a story about that that I will tell you just now. Now, Tejas. Tejas started as LCA. LCA and then it struggled and struggled and struggled. What Indian scientists got right? Now, DRDO had a separate, quite autonomous division called Aeronautical Development Establishment, sort of linked to HAL, not far from HAL, in fact, adjoining HAL. Now, that, that had a bunch of great designers, starting with Professor Rodar Narsimaya. He started working there and that attracted a lot of good designers. So, India came up with a great design, but India did not have an engine. India did, did not have avionics. And by that time, by that time, the fighter aircraft business, the fighter aircraft technologies were leapfrogging. Because fly-by-wire came in, the new engines came in, the new radars came in, the new armament systems came in. But India had the design. Finally now, Tejas is flying. Tejas is flying. The Air Force is happy with it. They are using it. And as we, as we talk, chances are that in a year or so, the new copies of the next version, the next version of Tejas, which is Tejas Mark 1A, that will come in now. It will have a lot of stuff on it, which is either imported or developed or produced in partnership with foreign manufacturers or foreign labs. But that's par for the course. That's par for the course. Those things happen. Those things have to be accepted. But the fact is that that, all, that, that will also be a DRDO success story, although, although about 20 years too late, maybe 25 years too late, right? And that is one of the problems with DRDO. Everything gets delayed. Look at the army. The army, besides Arjun tanks, which are there in small numbers, it has the INSAS small arm system. Now, INSA small arm system, we are all familiar with. The fact is that the bulk of the Indian armed forces are using this, but the bulk of the Indian armed forces are also not happy with the system. So the frontline, the frontline units, say those facing the Chinese on LAC, those facing the Pakistanis on LOC, etc., they are now transitioning to more modern rifles, more modern small arms, which are being imported again almost on an emergency basis. In fact, as we speak, Snehesh Alex Philip, our defense editor, tells me that Government of India has just, just issued an acceptance of necessity, that is the Defense Acquisition Committee, AON, the first step, for the acquisition of 41,000 light machine guns. Now, light machine guns are also part of the small arms pro program. In fact, a bunch of them were produced under the INSAS program. But it does look like the Indian Armed Forces are not happy with this. Again, this is a program that I wrote about in 1988. And you can see these stories, couple of these stories that I'm talking about, you will see on the screen. These are all done in India today, 1988. I visited the lab in Pune that was developing these weapon systems. And yet again, simple thing like small arms have not lived up to their promise. 
the Navy, the Navy has been more successful, partly because the Navy has its own design bureau and the Navy makes a big commitment to indigenization or Indian development or Indianization, because I prefer that to indigenization. So a lot of the Navy's design is homegrown. They've done it at home, particularly their stealth craft and also the BrahMos missile, which actually Army, Navy, Air Force, all of them are using. That's, that has a big DRDO input that, as we know, is a 50-50 India-Russia joint venture. While we talk about actual successes of DRDO, systems which are actually in the market. In this case, this one is literally in the market because if, if you only sell to Indian Armed Forces, it will be said that, look, it's a captive market. What choice do you, do you have? So it's the Pinaka multi-barrel rocket system, which now is being exported in sizable numbers to Armenia. Now, before I let you go, I will request you to take note of a very interesting point that it is quite fitting. It is in the fitness of things. It is not an irony. It is in the fitness of things. It's positive. It's in the fitness of things that these reforms in DRDO have been announced when the man who founded the modern DRDO passed away, unfortunately, at the age of 87. That was Dr. B.S. Arunachalam. Dr. B.S. Arunachalam was a prodigy so brilliant, he was a brilliant metallurgist, one of the best in India, one of the best in the world. So brilliant that he became the head of DRDO in 1982 when he was 47 years old, just at 47. He, he became the head of DRDO at 47. He held that job for 10 years. He held that job for 10 years and some of the programs that we are talking about right now were founded in his times. He, along with Sundarji and some others, they had they had not just, not just moral authority, they, they had aggression, they also had gift of the gap to get their way around the system and to get stuff done. So things like the Arjun program, the LCA, Light Combat Aircraft. Sometimes, in fact, when we wanted to pull Arunachalam's leg, we used to say, oh, LCA should be called last chance for Arunachalam because it was taking so long. Even after he demitted office and he went off to Carnegie Mellon University to be a professor in the same uh, in, in his own domain, which is which is metallurgy. If you would run into him on the conference circuit, we would still repeat the same joke to him. And the fact is that he gave Indian Defence Research this massive push. Now we criticize him and we criticize DRDO for many things, but just think about it. He served as the head of DRDO for ten years. Ten years. How many Raksha Mantris did he have to deal with in those 10 years? Think. He had to deal with 10 Raksha Mantris in those 10 years. And how many Prime Ministers? 5 Prime Ministers in those 10 years. So political instability also it causes changes in decision making, it causes confusion. He dealt with all that and through the sheer force of his personality, he and people like General Sundarji and K. Subramanyam, they kept on driving the idea of India building its own weapon system. Some of that's coming to fruition now. Now, among the more memorable lines he spoke with me, in fact, you will see it on your screen, sort of circled and highlighted, is a line that I quoted in my story from Awadi on MBT Arjun. That's when the third prototype had just come out. S sitting on the tank, he patted, he patted the armor on the tank's front and he said, this is the best armor you can get for love or money. That was his Kanchan armor. And I told you he was a metallurgist. So he saw that armor as his main contribution to that tank. So he passed away last week and deserves our tributes. And I think it's also a good tribute. And it's in this week that Modi government has announced this committee now to reform DRDO, which has been much delayed. Should have happened four decades back, but it's never too late to begin.